All right, so let's talk about chapter 24, which is all about colonial America. The thing we're going to focus most on is the Spanish impact on the Americas and how their government system was set up. There seems to be more of a focus on that for the AP test. In the British colonies, they're just kind of there doing their thing with the way um, they're following the model that Britain already has established. So pretty much, like, there's not a whole lot going on with Britain and their social structure. I'll touch on it, but the main thing that we're going to focus on, like I said, is the Spanish. So a couple things to keep in mind. When the Spanish come to the New World, the two groups that they are encountering that they are going to end up overthrowing and conquering are the Aztecs and the Incas. So Cortez is the one who comes and conquers the Aztecs. Um, disease is going to aid him. It also aids Pizarro when he goes and conquers the Incas. So it's more disease than Spanish technology or Spanish might that allows them to conquer these two civilizations. So keep that in mind. The Spanish are going to way over sell the importance of like their military greatness and how awesome their technology is when really it's just the fact, you know, that they gave everybody smallpox that allows them to conquer them. With the Aztecs, um, I've mentioned it before that you had tribal resentment from the, the people that the Aztecs conquered that they had the tribute relationship with and they allied themselves with Cortez and so that helped them to be able to conquer the Aztecs. Like I said, and then Pizarro is the one who goes and conquers the Incas. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, the British Empire and what they're up to. Please come back and pause it. Um, look over the slide because there are some important things that you need to know about what the British were up to. This is everything you need to know about them in the AP curriculum. We talked in chapter 23 about mercantilism and joint stock companies, and this is how Europeans um, controlled their colonial economies and how everything sets up. Now that you have the establishment of colonies, we get the Atlantic system or what y'all know is like the triangular trade. So it's the movement of goods and wealth and people between Africa, America, and Europe. You get coerced labor and I'll talk more about chattel slavery and indentured servitude later and more about um, plantations. Slavery and plantations aren't going to be as big in the British Empire at this point. Um, for British colonies, it's more European style cities is mainly what they're focusing on. The British and the French are focusing on settler colonies. They, the colonies that are set up are controlled by private investors, um, with little Royal backing. They have problems with the natives because they're taking their land and it's set up more, like their home country. So the British colonies are set up more like Britain. The French colonies are set up more like France. And when they came over, they're more concerned with trade routes and then they get involved in the fur trade. And so they're completely different than the way the Spanish colonies are set up. And I'll get into that in just a little bit. But so you kind of know where the British colonies were at this point. It's all over here. France is going to be over here in Louisiana. So like I said, let's get on to Spain. Or it's also, you'll hear it referred to as Iberian empires in the Americas, referring to the Iberian Peninsula. Some of the um, first people that came over, um, besides the conquistadors, um, when your settlers came over, they were granted what are called encomiendas which are land grants to Spanish settlers, and they are given total control of the land and the people on them. So if you were given a grant of land by the king and queen of Spain, and there happened to be, you know, a tribe of a thousand people living on there, congratulations, you just won yourself a thousand free slaves. 
So the encomienda was a land grant where you not only got the land, but then everything on the land. Lots and lots of references to the Spanish Empire in the AP key concepts. So let me highlight a couple things that you need to know. Um, again, mercantilism, the Colombian exchange, so we talked about diseases, cash crops, the big one for Spanish and Portuguese colonies is sugar. That is the most important cash crop. And this is what most slaves at this point are going to be used for was to grow sugar. And I'll come talk about more of this stuff in a minute. So like I said, slavery is a real big deal, primarily in the Caribbean and Brazil at this point. Not many slaves in North America because they really hadn't started um, growing cash crops. But you get the growth of the plantation economy. Like I said, the demand for slaves. And slavery as we think of it is chattel slavery where people were considered property. Indentured servitude you're going to find more in North America, like in the British colonies. Okay, so here's some history on what is Spain, just to kind of review a few things. Um, Spain is going to be one of the largest, most wealthiest Western European countries at this point. By 1492, which is the year of Columbus, they have finished the Reconquista. Ugh, that was horrible, sorry. Or the reconquering of Spain where they expelled the Muslims. Okay, so keep that in mind. And again, here's some more stuff. Again, um, so again, some more history. So Reconquista, exploration, um, Christianity, like these are all the reasons that Spain is getting involved in everything. So this is just some more background on the Spanish Empire. Uh, it'd be a good idea to, again, pause it, just kind of go look over this and read over it. We really haven't hit anything yet that's going to be on your quiz to this point. Like I said, this is all background information that you really, really, really need to know. So I'm going to get more into colonial society in the Americas because that's what the bulk of this chapter is in the next podcast.